Greetings, friends, curious acolytes of the galaxy, students of our vast temple, and welcome back. I have been expecting you. You have arrived at the perfect moment. We have just recently excavated the ancient location of the death and demise location of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Known publicly as Hugo Damask, Darth Plagueis the Wise was a legendary Dark Lord among Sith Lord who was a critical and vital member of the Intergalactic Banking Clan who was later referenced by Darth Sidious when attempting and goading Anakin Skywalker in the final steps into the dark side, stating that Darth Plagueis was a Sith Lord so powerful and so wise, he could use the Force to influence the midichlorians to create life. He had such a knowledge of the dark side, he could even keep the ones he cared about from dying, a concept that greatly intrigued the young Anakin Skywalker. He was remembered as Darth Plagueis the Wise, was a powerful Dark Lord of the Sith, hailing from the planet Mygito. Damask was born between 147 and 120 BBY to a female and male man. His mother discovered his sensitivity to the Force and gave him away to the Bith Sith Lord Darth Tenebris, the current reigning Dark Lord of the Sith, who trained Damask, now Plagueis, in the ways of the Sith and the Dark Side. The apprentice later murdered Tenebris by influencing and using the force on the stalactites that were impaled into the ceiling in order to dislodge his respirator, causing the death of Tenebris. Ascension to the Sith Lord was inevitable after the death of his master and snapping his neck, Plagueis, acting as the leader of Damask Holdings, a financial corporation, manipulated galactic affairs and corporations to advance the Sith agenda and the Galactic Republic's fall, hiding in plain sight between some of the most powerful Jedi, such as Grandmaster Yoga, Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and many, many others. He, while manipulating the planet Naboo, he discovered Palpatine, a man with a desire to rule and become a politician, a young Emperor Sheev Palpatine. Plagueis manipulated the boy to kill his family, which led the young man to accept Plagueis' Sith training and become the next Dark Lord. The Master and Apprentice continued the Sith agenda together, with Palpatine saving his master from a multitude of assassination attempts. However, Palpatine, now teaching the Zavak Sith Apprentice Darth Maul, wished to kill his master and rule the Republic alone, not wanting any challenges to his power. He, so, he's celebrating the manipulating senators and bureaucrats of the Republic by succeeding in voting Palpatine as the new Supreme Chancellor. Palpatine intoxicated Plagueis with solace and wine, causing him to die to Force Lightning in 32 BBY while the months slept. But, well, how did Plagueis die if Plagueis was so immensely powerful? How did Darth Plagueis, in all his immense power, die? We've already made a video about how powerful Darth Plagueis was and how he died. So, if you wish to check that out, I highly suggest it. It's truly one of our greatest pieces of content that we have uploaded. And I truly love Darth Plagueis and everything about him. But why did this nearly century old man Sith will not defend himself? Well, today we have the answer to that question. We must journey back to 52 BBY, 20 years before his death, where Plagueis was nearly assassinated. A quote goes with this from the Darth Plagueis novel, a Legends novel that is personally my favourite novel in all of Star Wars. Master, we need to leave at once. What I felt, the Jedi may have felt, and they may come. Let them. Let them inhale the aroma of the dark side. This carnage is beyond explanation. We can't be here. Recall the Sun Guard. When they're done here, no. I know when the Grand are. It won't be business as usual this time, Master. In 52 BBY, Plagueis attended La Shield's Order of Canting Circle. Many influential beings attended this event, which also attended the gathering, including many Muns from Damask Holdings and the IGBC La Shield which was standing at the end of the circle, wore black robes, which ten other months also did. The initiation ceremony would begin with the high official joining Hill on the circle hymn, and placing around his neck the order's signature pendant. That ceremony was offered to Plagueis twenty years prior, but Damask rejected it in fear that it would expose his Sith agenda. The event's aims were narrow, and the rituals were legictorial, filled with secret phrases and handshakes. Though Plagueis understood the need to instill members with some furtive fraternity, he did not risk having the high officials know much about his past as it could unravel his secret identity and his overlying schemes of the Sith. Last Hill's past had been exhaustingly shared, even the decades he had worked with Car Damask, 
as Plagueis had just returned from his short hollow transmission with his apprentice Insidious. Plagueis was filled with triumph. The Sun Guards and the event were leading to kill the Grand Procurator of Cage. As members of the Canted Circle entered the building, chatting with others, 11 4D rotated his head towards Plagueis to alarm him of danger. Without warning, the high official presiding over the ceremony gave a downward tug to Hill's pendant, severing his throat and head. As Hill died, several other officials and members thrust off their cloaks, revealing their true identities as Mulligan assassins, some immensely dangerous assassins. These assassins began to throw dozens of decapitated discs, cutting down numerous mums and decapitating them within seconds, instantaneously even. 11-4-D and Plagueis were both badly wounded by this erupt attack, with one disc severing Plagueis' trachea and blood vessels on the side of his throat, causing him to adopt a sort of respirator that reminded him a lot of Darth Malik. He used the force to clamp the wound shut and prevent unconsciousness and blood loss before beginning to attack the Maldolans with the force. Simultaneously, State Prestige informed Palpatine that a Moldian faction had accepted a contract by the Grand Proctor Procurator to carry out a major contract on Coruscant involving someone of Damask Holdings, realising their target and schemes. Palpatine and the Prestige swiftly made his way to the Order of the Canted Circle's location, where a heavily wounded and dying Plagueis was lashing out with the full fury of his dark side knowledge against his attackers. The two managed to defeat the assassins and save Plagueis' life in the end. When Plagueis ordered Palpatine to call the Sun Guard, Palpatine denied this request and told him he knew who had ordered this attack and that he would deal with it personally. Darth Plagueis had survived the Maldalor attack with grievous injuries. A considerable part of his lower face had been taken off by a decapitated disc that had also severed his treasure and several blood vessels. In order to survive, the Dark Lord had been condemned to wear a type of transpirator and respirator, which covered his face below the nose. One standard month after the attack, Plagueis summoned Sidious to Abora to reveal the true nature of his studies and experiments to his apprentice. For the next two decades, Damas lived an eremitic life in his laboratory, devoting all of his energy to the study of the Midichlorians, while Palpatine devoted himself to the political machinations and schemes that the last stages of the Grand Plan entailed. Additionally, Sidious began training his own apprentice, the Zabrak male Darth Maul, under Plagueis' watchful eye. The Mun found the Zathamirian Zabrak to be useful to the Sith, since he had been brought into Sidious' hands by his mother at the baby. That signature moment, where the decapitated dish had severed Plagueis' mouth and forced him to wear a breathing respirator, is the moment we need to turn over to now, as we venture into the tragedy and death of Darth Plagueis the Wise. The quote goes as follows, with Sidious on Plagueis' career. Let's go over the second part of the speech, shall we, you useless old fool? It was Higo Damask as Darth Plagueis, who came to Naboo, determined to suck the planet dry of plasma and set the Trade Federation up as its overseers. It was Higo Damask as Plagueis, who then set his sights on a seemingly confused young man and, with meticulous skill, manipulated him into committing patricide, matricide, fratricide. Darth Plagueis, who took him as an apprentice, sharing some of his knowledge but withholding his most powerful secrets, denying the apprentice his wishes as a means of controlling him, instilling himself and sense of murderous rage, and turning him to the dark side. It was Plagueis, who criticised the early efforts of his apprentice, and who once choked him in demonstration of his superiority. Plagueis, who denigrated him in private for hiring an inept assassin to carry out the murder of Senator Kim, and yet who allowed himself to be tricked by the Grand and killed m by mercenaries. Plagueis, who turned away from the Grand plan to focus entirely on himself in an egotistical quest for immortality. Giving the Sun Guard the night off due to Sidious' attainment of the Chancellor position, Plagueis retired with Palpatine in 114D to his penthouse suite, where in celebration, Plagueis and his apprentice drank Solaston wine. Sidious complimented Plagueis on his part of the plan and orchestrating essentially the entirety of the events that culminated in this moment, and told him he would endeavour to live up to Plagueis' expectations and wishes and fulfil his responsibility as a Dark Lord. Sidious rehearsed the speech he would give the next day to the Senate after he was elected Chancellor at Damascus request multiple times, saying that the Republic had been intact for millennia thanks to largely invisible beings whose accomplishments needed to be brought to the light of day, such as Higo Damas II. Actually, Plagueis. As the night continued to wane, Palpatine amended and corrected his speech, with Plagueis' critique while drinking more and more wine, intentionally intoxicating Plagueis with the Solaston foodstuff. 
Although Clagus attempted to stop drinking, his apprentice did not let him, forcing the mud to intoxicate himself to a point in which he started to sleep. While Plagueis was asleep, the human from Naboo threw force lightning at his master, barrage after barrage of light blue veins which woke up the man, while mocking Damas, Sidious threw more and more lightning at the Sith Lord, decimating his breathing device and making Plagueis suffocate. This is the moment I want to highlight right here. If Plagueis had not attained his breathing device in that Moldian assassination attack two decades prior, he would not have died. Darth Plagueis was exceptionally powerful and was just purely focusing on not dying at this point. However, he certainly would have had some counter to Force Lightning. However, because of the Moldian attack dislodging his respirator, he could not even muster a single breath. Right now, all he cared about was not dying. And slowly, agonizingly, he was dying. He needed to breathe in order to conjure the Force, or soon he would inevitably die with all his power and all his wisdom. And despite the fact Plagueis had denied his death, he feared it could happen, and attempted to stand up and fight. However, he toppled onto his couch thanks to his intoxication and drunkenness. He was slowly killed by Sidious' tangle of forced lightning, causing his master's death to be utterly agonizing, eventually suffocating and losing his life, one that he believed would never lose with his midichlorian studies, dying right on the cusp of discovering the secret to eternal life. Plagueis' body released an expulsion of dark side energy that could be heard as a ripple throughout Coruscant and knocked out Sidious Cole. Plagueis' body did not dissolve, however, and was left behind. His corpse of the Mun Sith Lord that Palpatine had, had trained him in the ways of politics and the ways of the dark side, finally ridded of life. Well, my friend, what did you think of this unique fact? Did you agree with my speculation? Plagueis would not have died if that one assassination attempt had not have decapitated his lower jaw. He ended up a very Darth Malak-like being, with Darth Malak ultimately ending up with half of his jaw severed after a brutal duel with his own master in Darth Revan during their tenure as Sith Lords. In the end, Plagueis' own fear of death got the better of him. He got cocky. He believed that his apprentice would never betray him. But the dark side called out to Sidious right as he was at the doorway. Sidious had originally planned to not kill Plagueis and to have him rule as his side, seeing him as a very powerful and potential ally. However, in the end, the dark side beckoned out to the y young Sith Lord and soon to be Chancellor, telling him to kill Plagueis. Well, my friends, what did you think of this video? Are you enjoying the content we are releasing? Darth Plagueis is a truly enigmatic and mysterious Sith that I hope to cover more on the channel in the future, including planning a lore compilation on him, which I'll release soon. Goodbye, my friends, and I'll see you in a galaxy far, far away.